Rachel Amber started off as a mystery, but there are parts of Rachel everywhere in this first game. She's the missing girl on the posters across Blackwell Academy campus. People wrote nasty graffiti about her on desks in lockers in the bathroom. Lots of conflicting stories and rumors about her. Hayden says she was a cool girl who was smart and not bitchy, who hung out with Vortex Club but never really was a part of it. Another girl swore Rachel was having sex with Mr. Jefferson, the photography teacher. She was in Evan's photo portfolio as a stunning model in a couple of photos. So what happened to her? She's this cool, smart, popular girl that everyone knows and loves. How did she end up missing? Max finally gets a little bit of information about Rachel when she talks to Chloe. Uh, Chloe and Rachel became best friends after Max moved away from Arcadia Bay a few years back. And they were even planning to run off to L.A. together before she went missing. Chloe never did believe she just ran off without her. She always assumed something terrible had happened. By the end of episode one, we get a bit of a teaser in the form of some red binders in a cabinet. One of the names on the binder is Rachel. But not everything about Rachel was so pretty. As we continue going through the game, we see that she was actually kind of had a reputation of a being promiscuous girl. And a lot of people treated her like some sort of a sex object, even though there was no real evidence that she did anything inappropriate with anyone. When Max and Chloe break into the principal's office to get information on Nathan Prescott, they come across Rachel's like student file. And it seemed like she was a perfect student. She had straight A, 4.0 GPA. She was loved by all the staff and all the faculty. She was in multiple extracurricular activities. And she was looking like she was going to get into university. There wasn't really a lot of information about the police investigation, but it just seemed like Rachel was a really cool girl and that she had a bright future ahead of her. So Max and Chloe continue scouting in, I believe, episode four of Life is Strange, Nathan reveals that Frank was pretty close to Rachel. So Frank's the town's local drug dealer, kind of sketchy guy who lives in an RV with a dog. And so that kind of gave us suspicion that maybe he had done something sinister. You know, Nathan goes so far as to say that he keeps a picture of Rachel in his wallet and seemed like he was really in love with her. And that maybe he had something to do with her disappearance but it turns out that Frank just really likes her and that they had a real relationship. You know, he did carry around a picture of Rachel in his wallet, said that she was really beautiful and that they liked each other. Of course, this kind of is contradictory to all the other information that Chloe had about Rachel. So they end up breaking into his RV that was parked at the Two Whales, which is the restaurant that Chloe's mom works at at the diner. And so they find his secret stash of pictures and letters between him and Rachel. And yeah, it pretty much confirms what Nathan was saying. There was pictures of them hugged up, pictures of Rachel playing with his dog, a love letter. And it seemed like she ran off and stole some money from Frank after they had a really bad argument. But there was something valid there. Now, so, of course, when Chloe learns this information, she's pissed. She's like, oh, my goodness, she's not who I thought she was. She's not a saint. She lied to me because Chloe thought that she was the only love interest in Rachel's life. She had no idea that Rachel had a whole other relationship <laughs> with Frank. In the final episode, Max and Chloe uncover this hidden bunker at the bottom of the Prescott barn, which is basically a dark room. Uh, filled with photos of other girls like Kate, drugged up, tied up, and photographed. Basically confirming that Rachel was one of those victims. Even in the pictures, though, Rachel seems very feisty and spirited, like she was ready to fight back. And the girls assume that this is Nathan's doing, that he must have kidnapped her or done something to her at school and brought her into this barn since it's owned by his family and it was in the way, like, far away from the town far away from other people area in Arcadia Bay. But that actually turns out it's not Nathan's doing after Mr. Jefferson kills Chloe in the junkyard and kidnaps Max by drugging her. He admits that he found Rachel's fighting spirit to be very intoxicating and that he killed her because 
he obviously couldn't let her live after he kidnapped her and took pictures of her. He was afraid she was going to tell. It's sad, but Rachel's death obviously is going to leave a huge impact on Frank, on Chloe, and on everyone in Arcadia Bay. Finding out what happened to her does provide closure. And you do have a couple of dialogue options at the end when Chloe's stepdad, David, comes in to rescue Max. You could either tell him the truth that Chloe is dead and he'll end up killing Mr. Jefferson, or you lie and say that Chloe's still alive and then he'll call the police and Mr. Jefferson will get arrested. For me and my gameplay, I lied and said that Chloe was still alive so that Mr. Jefferson could go to jail and give the Rachel's parents closure and the rest of the town closure and also keep David out of jail. There's no need for another person to suffer and leave Joyce, Chloe's mom, all by herself. Hopefully in the next game, they still pull out the heartstrings the way that this game did because I felt such an overwhelming connection to the game. You feel for Chloe losing her bestie and potential girlfriend. It was never explicitly explained, but it seemed like Rachel and Chloe were more than just regular friends. And it's also, you feel so strongly because Mr. Jefferson seems to be like the pillar of a teacher. Max was inspired by him. He was a famous photographer who was now professor at their private like art academy. All the students loved him. He was at the Vortex Club, you know, Halloween party. Like He was a big part of the story as well. And for him to end up being the villain proves that anyone and everyone has the potential to be a bad guy. So let me know in the comments below, when you originally played this game, did you have any clue that Mr. Jefferson was the bad guy and that he was the one behind Rachel's disappearance? Or what did you, where did you think the story was going to take you?